Alrighty, so it's time to talk about the most controversial game so far in this playoffs. And I'll tell you what, somewhere in Vancouver, Renny Sartini is probably still uh, saying some explicit things toward the referee. And I'm probably still flipping the birds toward the referee because, yeah... We'll definitely talk about that controversial event that happened near the end of the game and that, I'll tell you what, as controversial as some of the calls that got against Vancouver in this one, it could have been a lot more controversial, especially what ha happened if, if that certain goal actually uh, ended up standing for LAFC late in this game. And we'll, of course, as I said, get more to that near the end of this review. But first of all, going back to the first half, uh, there was a lot of possession early for the Whitecaps as LAFC was elect to sit back and counter. Uh, White did have the first chance of this game, but he puts it high from close. Before Moreno would head it wide from the corner, and I mean, bro, set piece defending will look like it's continuing for the Whitecaps because, you know, in the last game against LAFC, one of the big big downfall for the Whitecaps in that 5-2 that loss was set pieces. They, they gave up four out of those five goals came off of set pieces and with the way that they were very unconvincingly defending that first set piece in that first corner, I thought the Whitecaps were in for a long night uh, in terms of defending set pieces. Now, the good news is that was really the only time they didn't look uh, comfortable. They actually looked look much better defending set piece in this one. Though, on the other end, Hollins had almost scored an own goal there as he had his backwards header that almost went in it there. I think he had a miscommunication there with Craig Poe, and he kind of had that one backwards, and it almost went into the back of the net as an own goal. Uh, though I thought as much as the game was very fast in the first 10 minutes, it did slow down after a lively start in this one. And then we get to the controversy of this game. And, you know, as much as we'll talk about some of the controversial event happened at the end of the game, this was easily a, a big talking point throughout this game, too, because this was the difference uh, of LAFC moving on into the next round as a penalty was given to LAFC after Blackman and Veselinovic sandwich Gonzalez in the box. Now, in real time, I don't think that was a penalty. I think in real time, time you know, that, that looked like it was a very soft call. If you slowed down the play, maybe you could say that it, it's a penalty. I mean, there, there was definitely contact with the way that, you know, Gonzalez... Uh, was kind of sandwiched there between Blackman and Veselinovic, but it just kind of looked like Gonzalez may, maybe draws that, that penalty, and that, again, I've seen that happen before where it's not been, been called in the regular season, and that in a vital game like that, I wouldn't have give, given that as a penalty, and it, especially in the playoffs, you know, we have seen referee tends to swallow the, the whistle and maybe try to let it. So some of the thing goes that could be, be, be obvious to, to be a call in the regular season. So to see that being called a penalty, yeah, I, I was a little, little bit surprised. And even the announcer, of course, were, were, were surprised uh, by, by this. I think Keith Kostegan and, and Moa Du was kind of surprised, the fact that it, it was given. And also the fact that they, they uh, well, they did kind of look at VAR to see whether or not it, it indeed is, is confirmed. And it was, so yeah, uh, LAFC got the penalty, albeit in a very controversial way, and Bawanga steps up to take the penalty. Vancouver fans were hoping that the ball don't lie in this moment. Unfortunately, the ball did lie in this this moment, in their perspective, because Bawanga buries it. He gives LAFC a one nothing lead, albeit in a controversial way. And then in the 27th minute, Takuaka would deny Tillman in the near post, and then a couple seconds later, he would deny Bawanga from close range as LAFC had the momentum. They were pressing for another one. Vancouver looked like they were rattled and they were still frustrated of that, that penalty call that got against them. Uh, Takuaga then denied Tillman from long range before Crepo almost with a goalkeeping howler here in the 43rd minute as he kicks this one upfield, not knowing that White was right near, near his face. And by the time he kicked that one on the field, White was there to block that. And he is very lucky that when, when that shot was blocked from Brian White, it didn't go into to the back of the net. I mean, if that one went into the back of the net, not only the fact that there's going to be the celebration from the Whitecaps fan, but those Whitecaps fans will make sure they let, let Maxine Crapo here at all game long. I mean, they were booing him pretty much throughout the whole game, rightfully so, especially the way Crapo basically uh, left Vancouver uh, to LAFC, not in a really good good term. But yeah, you know, Crapo kind of got away with that moment. There was another shout for a penalty for Vancouver that was not given at the end of the first half, but we do head to halftime with uh, the score one nothing uh, for LAFC. Now in the second half, uh, Larea was in on goal there, but he hits that one right to Crepo, and then Vite would puts it high from long range. Amid that hits it uh, 
right to Craig Paul as the Whitecaps definitely uh, put some pressure early on, but I thought LAFC eventually did ride out the, the early league pressure that the Whitecaps put, and the Whitecaps started to become a little stagnant on the attack. I mean, as much as I know everybody's going to focus on the controversial play, when you kind of minus that out, I do think that LAFC deserved to, to win this game, mainly because I didn't think the Whitecaps did enough on the attack to be, be deserved to win this one. Uh, though in the 62nd minute, Takoko would deny Bawanga from close before Ahmed would puts it over the bar from the volley. White then hits it right to Crapo in the near post. Uh, they then announced the, the attendance is 30,204, which is a new record for the Vancouver Whitecaps. They mentioned they did open the upper bowl. Uh, the upper bowl wasn't actually full on this one. In fact, it was only like a quarter full, but still, it's a good burnout uh, for, for this game. In with the way that you know, you know, the fact that they can get 30,000 uh, in for this game and against a white cap team that has had problems in terms of their attendance for the past couple of years, uh, it's still amazing to see that they were able to break their club record in this one. Uh, Juliet then blasted high from long range in the 80th minute. Uh, again, the white caps they continue to get chances, but none of these really were high quality chances. And you notice I didn't mention Craig Bowl's name a lot because Craig Bowl didn't really need to make a lot of save in this one because. Most of the shots that, that the Whitecaps were putting wasn't really on, on target. So that all changed in the 85th minute because uh, White had a point-blank header there, and he hits it right to, to Craig Paul. That is one that Brian White is going to be, be having nightmares, not only tonight, but probably for the rest of the offseason because that, that was it. That was the moment, and that, that came from Ryan Gold Cross, too. We've seen this so many times for, for the Whitecaps th this season. It has worked almost every single time. Except for that moment. And yeah, again, that is going to be a moment that White's going to be thinking about for a very, very long time. And really, as the time winds down, LAFC, they were comfortable sitting in a low block. They were looking to see this one out and move on into the next round. And then we get to the crazy part. We get to the part where, where you know, besides the, the controversial penalty that, that happened early, that was a big talking point. This was even a bigger talking point because this all started... In the fifth minute of stoppage time, when looks like the ball was bounced toward Alessandro Shroop and he was ready to take the shot, the problem was the referee got in the way. Uh, the referee basically, basically, um, it basically threw a pick on him, and that Shroop kind of re ran. Well, the the referee ran into to Shroop in this moment, and because of that, that basically started a counter attack on the other end. And keep in mind, uh, Takaka was already up. Uh, to take this uh, set piece opportunity, so there was an empty net for LAFC on the other end, and Bawang uh, basically tapped this one into the empty net, and it was two nothing if they were LAFC, despite the fact that literally that counter attack would have not happened if the referee uh, didn't get get in the way. Honestly, when I look at that play, that really reminds me of what happened uh, a couple of years ago. I think it was back in 2017, actually. It's not just a couple of years. This this has been like six or seven years ago where uh, this was back when, when the, the rule says that if, if um, the referee... Um, touches the ball at any plate, and if it's on, on a promising attack uh, that led to a goal, then they, of course, won't will will uh, actually stop the play. Uh, and this was, I think it was between the Quakes and Atlanta United, where I think Atlanta scored that four, four of goal, and it was mainly because the referee got in the way of the, the ball, and then uh, Atlanta, of course, go on the counterattack and eventually score that four of goal, and I was definitely not a happy camper when I, I saw that, that happen, even though I know in that game the Quakes would have would have lost, even though a lot of Quakes fans blame the fact that that was the moment that they, they lost the game. But I think this one is even worse, considering that, yeah, again, you know, it was clear. It's it's in a playoff off game like, like that, and that it's also not a surprise that, you know, Vanny Sartini, you know, he, you know, how, how, how Vanny Sartini is. He is a very animated character on the, the touchline. He was pretty much animated throughout this game, too. And yeah, he definitely went off in a, in a very big way. Like he was very animated. He he, he basically got him, himself actually on the the pitch to to share his displeasure. And when you're a head coach and you're basically on the pitch, it's an automatic red card. So he of course was was sent off, but that doesn't doesn't mean he he's, he's gonna finish saying whatever he said. He continued to say say some explicit thing after the red card is handed out. And I I guarantee you somewhere in the producer team for Apple TV they they couldn't hit that mute button in terms of, of the 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 field mic next to Vanny Sartini 
as quick as possible because if they pick that up, oh boy, I guarantee you we're gonna see a bunch of f bomb, a bun bun bunch of um bunch of nasty things that I'm pretty sure sure um for, for the children that is watching seeing this game that Apple TV definitely do not want want to 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 uh to release and don't want to explain to the FCC late later on of why they were 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 broadcasting up some, some an, an angry tyrant rim with a lot of explicit language on their their broadcast but yeah uh, of course Sartini of course he got sent off and by the way I have no problem with Sartini doing that in fact I think anyone would have reacted that, that way. Like, I know Vanny Sartini is a very, very, uh, and made a character at time, and I, I like the character that, that, that he brings to to this league. And that in that moment, I mean, even if, if you have a, a calm head coach there, he would have absolutely lost it too, because there is no way in the world you should be able to see your team can see, see the goal, mainly because the referee gets in, in the way and he didn't didn't stop the play. And this is also where we're going to have that discussion about, well, you know, we seen before, before by the letter of, of the law, if the referee touched the ball and if it's on a resulting on a promising attack, then we, we should stop play. I feel like the, the letter of law law is going to have to maybe re, re, re uh, ratify that it's going to be involving in terms of even if the referee doesn't touch the ball and that if it lets to a counterattack because as we've seen in that in that sequence uh that could happen in, in games and and even though as we'll talk about in just a bit that uh in the nba or did disallow the goal that goal would have stand man this would have been a really bad look in terms of mos and also just another black eye of what just many many controversial moment that pro had have, have, have talked about and i don't even want to get to talk about my uh, of the problem with Pro because I've already made that video a couple of years ago and it's literally the same same crap that I've been seeing every single year and that yeah that's gonna be something that I think think the the letter of the long and even MOS is going to have to 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 look into because yeah that can ha happen and and again you know the o only reason why it didn't ha it didn't happen here is because uh while that of course was happening oh by the way the refuse suck champ was definitely ringed out and it was ringed out loud inside B bc place again not a big surprise i mean not only the fact that manny sartini they was losing it the crowd was definitely losing it they they must be absolutely fuming that that they they could see the goal mainly because the referee got in the way and it set up a counterattack uh for lafc but uh they did check to see whether or not if uh the pass from vela to bawanga was in an offside position and there was no question that that was offside. I mean, I think the only reason why they got into VAR is because of of, of how 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 things kind of got a little bit crazy with Sartini kind of being a, a, anim, animated, and then they kind of had to 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 control control that, and that eventually they did had to go to VAR to to see whether or not if that was a legal goal. And again, uh, the other reason why I'll I'll say that that is offside and clearly offside is that just because you have a player that is back back there in terms of trying to clear off the line because there's no goalkeeper uh that that defender is basically act as the the, the goalkeeper and that it is pretty clear that Bawanga was was way past the the last man there I mean I think Carlos Vela forgot that 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 is the case there because he, he should have just shot shoot it there like he, he didn't need to pass that one uh to Bawanga though I think maybe Pro will be thanking Vela for, for passing to Bawanga and having that goal disallowed because again if that goal would have stand Oh boy, you can guarantee there's going to be a lot of, of angry, angry White Cast fan and even angry neutral MLS fan. I mean, even you could say say some LAFC fans will, will feel very, very sorry about, about this outcome because that we should not be seeing a, a goal that is given because of the fact that the referee complete a, a play, especially in, in the playoffs as we're, we're into to this point. But yeah, again, like I said, after all the craziness, the VAR did disallow Bawanga go. By the way, as Vanny Sartini uh, was escorted off the field and as VAR basically disallowed the go, yeah, Sartini was not done in terms of uh, insulting the referee. He then decided to basically flip both words to the referee. Now, they did show that, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Apple TV, they they uh, they probably were, were very concerned. And that I, I, I actually didn't hear people... Stegen mentioned the fact that we apologize for 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 what Manny Sartini ha, ha, has done because yeah what he did there I mean I mean for me I have no pro problem with it but you know just for a general audience maybe that's kind of inappropriate to see see a manager clearly flipping both 
for first to, to some someone, but yeah, again, again, uh, as he was coming off the pitch, he, he he had his last say and basically decided to flip both birds uh, toward the referee. That being said, as the play resumed, because the game was not over uh, yet, uh, Takoko would then deny Bogus from close range, and then on the other end, Paul had a chance to tie the game late, and this was a good look for him. Like, he had all the space to shoot this one, uh, and he couldn't quite connect enough power. He's trying to curl that one in, but it goes right to Craig Paul. And yeah, after that, the full-time whistle was blown. And then uh, a couple of minutes after the full-time whistle was blown, uh, Benny Sartini was actually allowed back on the pitch. And he actually was was able to shake hands with all the players and coaching staff, both teams. This is why we love Benny Sartini. This is why Benny Sartini is basically the, the Dan Campbell of MLS. I mean, if you guys know who Dan Campbell is, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys know Dan Campbell unless you don't watch the NFL. He's probably the most like, likable head, head coach. Uh, in the NFL, and I can say the same thing about about Vanny Sartini. I mean, you, you simply cannot hate Van, Vanny Sartini. Like you can be a rival of, of the Vancouver Whitecaps, and you can be either a Sounders or, or Timbers fan. You cannot hate hate that man because of the passion that he showed, and he also showed that good good sportsmanship at the end. Though, man, I don't know if MLS would agree with that. I, I have a feeling MLS probably is gonna fight Sartini very harshly and especially you know as i mentioned him allowed back on the pitch i don't think he's allowed to do that after you of course got sent off uh into to the stands i don't think you can just walk on back onto the pitch even the full-time whistle was blown but who cares i mean this is vanny sartini that that we're gonna talk talk about and this this is you know i already have a lot of respect for vanny sartini he just gained, gained so much more respect and just so so much much uh so much fan them not only for for white Cavs fan but probably for for all mos fans of of the character that that he, he brings brings to this league but yeah in the end after all the controversial happened in this one it is still a one nothing win for lafc and the shots in this one 13 shots for the eight that lafc had seven shots on go for the five that the white caps had six shots off target for the one that lafc had no shots that was blocked for the two that the white caps had and possession wise 57 percent possession Compare the 43% possession that LAFC has in this game. And like I said, as much as I, I know, you know, White Caps fan will be very upset about the controversial call. At the end of the day, I if you minus the controversial call, I don't think they did it enough in this one to get all, all three three points. And in a must-win game like that, they didn't really show that much urgency that 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 you could say that they, they thoroughly deserve to get all three points and, and thoroughly feel like they got robbed in this game but anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash the subscribe button let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game and yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time